The Bible says that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not counting our sins against us. He made Christ, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. This is a word that carries not just the concept of a God, and because Paul wants to get down to brass tacks about they, you got so many gods. Let me tell you about what. Let me tell you about the God I want to talk about. I want to want you to understand that He has a powerful essence that's effective in your daily living. Um, so that that's he uses a word there that uh, attaches to the way they normally think, anyhow. And what, what is Paul after is checking their positive list at God consciousness. He's, he's trying to, he's got a door open. The next door he wants open is a positive attitude about God. Let's talk about a God that we can be positive about. And listen, many of them, they opened the door on it. Many of them went right with it. And then he gave the gospel and they went up with it again. Now, listen, when everybody opened it and what he's trying to do is see if we're positive about this one God. If I can get you positive about this one God, I've got, we can go to a second step. But if we shut down, that, you know, I'm going to go get a cup of coffee and go home. But if not, and so, listen, there was, okay, go on. See? Th shows positive, listen, God consciousness, and so he moves forward with it. And th that's just a wonder. I mean, that's just, and so... Positive, but listen, positive volition, God consciousness doesn't mean everybody's going to get saved. It means they're going to get a gospel hearing. Right? They're going to get a gospel hearing. They, and so they did. There was an open door there. For many of them, they opened the door. He went on, pre gave the gospel, went on uh, with that. They already knew what, about the gospel. He's now explaining it in a little more detail. Watch the reaction, though. Watch the reaction. Watch this reaction. What, look at verse 32. Watch the reaction. Now look, they've all, been, most of them have, I can't say all because, but most of them open the door. I'm, I'm, I'm positive to God consciousness. And then he goes through, you know, he goes through his message he's given before in death, burial, and resurrection business. And when they heard the resurrection of the dead, watch, watch the three action. One sneered. So they went negative, went positive on God, went negative on the gospel. Another said, I want to hear more. That's still the open door. Now we got the open door, positive volition on gospel, agreed. I want to hear more. And then notice in verse 34, some got saved. Some believed, right? Some men joined and believed. And then he mentions a couple that, that did that. Okay, so it's this guy. Now, what was Paul's objective? Well, his objective is always to be the opportunity to preach the gospel and get people saved, of course. And then the outreach, you know, now Paul, if somebody gets saved, then Paul has got a whole ministry. He's got a second wave of ministry, follow up. We used to call it follow up. But wh how, what are you going to do with the converts? What are you going to do with the newborn babes? You got to take some responsibility for them, right? And you have to take responsibility to secure their salvation. Newborn babes desire to send milk. Somebody's got to, somebody's got to give them milk. And so Paul understood that, that, that aspect of it. And then, uh, you know, I, I love this fact that Paul, Paul gives the gospel. And for those who are not going to believe, he mentions judgment. Because listen, listen, when you preach, when you preach the gospel you're going to have the same kind of response. Some people are going to go, nope, not interested. Some people go like, I'm interested, but I need, I need to deduct some more. And the other person go like, I believe that. Right? For those, listen, so when the gospel is preached, I mean, sometimes you might go and you preach the gospel and say, look, I don't know that I had any response. Oh, yeah, you did. You always have a response to the gospel. It may have, may have been negative. And listen, if it's negative, then the reason you were there was to bring them to judgment. 
You understand? They're going to stand for the judgment seat of, of God one day, right? The, the great white throne judgment seat. And they're, they're going to give account. And, and listen, your, your name's going to be attached to that if you did it right. Otherwise, somebody is, right? Somebody's name is going to be attached to it. Uh, you, you heard the gospel very clear. You understood the deal. You rejected it. Right? And so he talks about that. He, he talks about uh, um, that he, uh, he says, because he has fixed a day in, his, in which, in verse 31, because he has fixed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness through a man who he's appointed. Just like, listen, like in John, the three, everybody quotes John 3.16, but look, if you're preaching, going to use that text, you've got to go to 18 as well. You, so it, your, your proof text ought to be 16, 17, 18. Because if somebody walks out of there without 16, they're go you need to make sure they understand 18. <laughs> I'm thankful. I'm thankful the old boy that preached to me did. Because the judgment part is what got me. I couldn't walk away from that part. Uh, so here's the point, third thing. So I find Paul, I, I, I find Paul, and, and listen, you're going to have those kind, typically you're going to have those three kinds of responses from people when you share truth with them, right? Some people are like, I'm interested to talk more. Other people shut right down on you. Other people are like, boy, have I been waiting to hear that. that uh, so here's three, positive volition at God consciousness makes it possible to give gospel hearing based on 2 Peter 3, 9, God is not willing that any should perish. 1 Peter, uh, the second chapter, verses 4 through 6, God who desires all men to be saved. See, that's why ambassadorship is so important, isn't it? That's why we don't pass up anybody. We pass up nobody that has an interest or we think might be interested, right? We, we stop and share the truth. We take the time. All who does, all who desire all men to be saved, to come to knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all the testimony given at a proper time. See, that's, that's Paul's bottom line in it. I mean, that's just what drives in and motivates him. Should do, and, and listen, should do all of us. He himself, talking about Jesus Christ, is a propitiation for our sins and not only for ours only. Watch this now. And not for ours only but for those of the whole world. Listen, Jesus Christ died for the whole world to be saved, not just some. He, listen, he made it possible for everybody. When he died on that cross, we call that unlimited atonement. Everybody. He didn't die for one. He didn't die for some. He died for all. The gospel is sown to positive volition in good ground. Matthew 13, 23. The gospel is sown to positive volition. Positive volition, God consciousness, gets an opportunity to have the gospel hearing. We call that good ground. That good ground could stay good if it believes it. Now, it, now it's good ground forever, isn't it? This is done. Listen. So the gospel goes to positive listening, and God consciousness, then the conviction of the Holy Spirit, right? Thank God that we have the, listen, if you present the gospel, the Holy Spirit from your life presenting the gospel, as, the, the, listen, will convict that person of, 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 of sin, judgment, and righteousness. That's his job. My job is to give a clear, very clear gospel and grace salvation. The rest of that is, is his business. When he comes, listen, when you read that John 16, 7 through 11, when he comes, he will convict the world of this and this and this and this. And it describes it. See, I find that, I find that my job is the easiest in this whole thing. Now, if someone's going to get persecuted, I'm going to get persecuted because they can't find the Holy Spirit. So, Right? They get me and they think they got him, and that's true in it. When you think about the bigger picture of conversion, and I often do, 
when, when you stop to think the, about the, it, look at the bigger picture of conversion, grace salvation is a miracle. Look at all. I mean, God has to prepare. He's prepared nations. He's got boundaries. He's got languages. And somehow you go like, well, I'm going to, I'm going to, and you wind up over there. It's just an amazing thing. And he's prepared somebody, positive volition, God consciousness. You walk up, you talk about God. They're, they're interested. They're going like, give me more. So you give them the gospel of Jesus Christ, give me more. And then you, you say, well, look, here's, here's what salvation means. Do you have it? And they go like, yes. Well, listen, come back tomorrow and I'm going to tell you what this meant. Or if you got time today, we'll go on. Now that you're a convert, let me tell you what just happened to your life. And so you secure their salvation. I know this has happened to Horton, but Hughes and I were over in Atlanta one time. And um, it was in the 60s and r r race tension was higher. And we had to sign a thing that we nobody was responsible for us, but whatever, you know, a waiver in order to hold an assembly in the football stadium. They said, oh, this will be, this is crazy. But the guy at the head of it had so many problems going on, and he was a believer. He said, I don't care. My Listen, we're a wreck anyhow. This was in the 60s. We could give come forward invitations. They sure didn't want that. We didn't even have to have the heart to tell them we were going to do that. Gave a come forward invitation. There were very few people standing in the stadium. They were all on the field with us. And we stayed there a week. We never left that high school. We stayed. He set us up in the library and he funded us kids. We stayed with, listen, they broke school down. We did that in the morning. They didn't have school the rest of the day. Those kids never left that football field. They never left that football field. We spent all day with those kids. And the principal set us up in the library. And, and he funded us kids for a whole week. Atlanta, Georgia. And I, one of those great big high schools with about 3,000 kids. And you never see anything like it in your life. I mean, how does that happen? I mean, how does that happen? And, you know, it has nothing to do. There was nothing to do with me and Rick. We were just two dumb guys just running around trying to preach Jesus Christ. And, you know, we, we didn't have enough rain. If, if we'd had any sense, we probably wouldn't have been there to start with. You know, if we'd have listened to the media and everything. But we believe we had, we believe we had the absolute solution to this stuff. Just give us a chance. And, I mean, how does that happen? That's an absolute miracle. You know, that, how does that happen? God, he sets that. He sets that whole stage up. He sets that whole thing up. There's no way you could possibly make And listen, never had that happen again like that. Had other things happen, just, you know, pretty big, startling things, but never were that just, I mean, those kids would not leave the field. They, they were weeping and broken down. And Christian teachers were down on the field with groups and the coaches, the co one of the coaches got saved, half the football players up there before, I mean, they were the first ones that hit the field. It was an amazing, I mean, how does that work? I mean, God, it, there's so much behind the scene that has to be done to create such an event like that. It's just amazing. And just think how many of the churches out there in Atlanta that were praying about this racial stuff going on, that were praying, oh, God, get a hold of this. And we're, we're in one of the toughest neighborhoods with all of this stuff going on, and, and it was tough. And God just stepped into that thing and just did it. And there's nothing. There's, there's no way you, you can't put that in a box and sell it or, or do anything. It's a God thing. And... and um, uh, and that, to me, is amazing grace. You know that first line? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. You know? That's amazing grace, people. The final thing is the importance of missionary evangelism is understanding that it is God's will. But listen, re really get this point. I'm just about out of time, but listen, get this point. 
the importance of missionary evangelism, understanding that it is God's will to send or to bring positive listen to gospel hearing and that all church age believers are called to be the ambassador of it. And listen, you do not want to miss an opportunity like Rick and I had in that event. You do not want to miss that. You know, and you never know when that's going to be. We didn't go over there with anything like that to anticipate anything like that. There's no way to plan for that. I mean, we were scheduled to be other places and couldn't leave. We had to cancel all those other places that we were scheduled to be. There was no way we could leave. There was no way. I mean, it was such a God thing. There's no way you could walk away from that until he says it's time to walk away. It didn't matter what was scheduled. And so, listen, and, and so this is a very important principle. Point four is a very important principle. God knows where pockets and people with positive volition are in the world and in the community. He knows that. You pay attention to that. God will bring the person or the pocket of positive volition to you or you to them. Let me show you. Now, when you get a chance to read these, you read these because you're going to see this, this marvelous thing happen. For example, in Luke 11:31, God brought the queen of the south to Solomon. In Luke 11:32, God sent Jonah to the Ninevites. In Acts 8, 26 through 38, God brought the Ethiopian to Jerusalem and then Philip to him. Think about that. God brought Paul to Macedonia in Acts 16, 9 through 10, the, the call to come over to Macedonia. He gets over to Macedonia. He winds up in a, in a prison in Philippi for preaching the gospel to get a jailer, the head jailer, saved in his whole family. I mean, who could do that stuff? Oh, Paul, I guess you're going to plan to go to Philippi and go to prison and save the jailer. I mean, nobody would sit down and write that script, right? Nobody. Nobody could write that script. And, and see, all that was in Acts 16, right? Paul's second missionary trip. Uh, God teaching and training a missionary has a heart for the gospel. Well, Father, here we are. We're in a cultural war, aren't we, Father? But it's for the soul of the church as well as our nation. Just like in Atlanta, boy, and nobody, nobody even went to that, that place. And look, when there's a shooting like this terrible thing that happened in Nevada, where are these people that say, you can't have prayer, you can't do this, and you can't do that? What would happen if those people, like this guy out, this group that would want to shut down something in Leeds that the community wants? You know, it's, it's not this other money that supports that community. It's the people's money that, that does that. Where would these people be if they rose up and said, we can't do that because uh, separation from religion? Oh, man. Well, here we are, Father. It's a, it's a, it's a wonderful day of, of opportunity for the church of Jesus Christ, not only for prayer, but for proactive gospel. What can change people's hearts? Not legislation. Not legislation, that's for sure but the gospel can. So we pray for Leeds. What a wonderful little community there. They've always been strong with the gospel of Christ and, and their Christian faith. And um, these people, may who? May they be strong. May they stand up, be strong about what they want their community. It's their school, it's their children. It's their money. Okay, that's why so many schools have been privatized or brought into local city control. And people got to be willing to pay the taxes for it. But I pray for that. I thank you, Father, for this study tonight, for these uh, their attendance, and for those on the internet and. I pray we get a, a look at missionary evangelism and, and become engaged in it.
because God wants, if there's ever been a call for missionary work, both home and abroad, it is now. And uh, boy, if there's ever a need in America, as you can see, Father, what's going on in America, we need to be, we need to be missionary minded about America. And uh, Puerto Rico and those islands got hit. I mean, just, oh God, they just got what you might say leveled. And uh, we lift them before you and pray for that in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not counting our sins against us. He made Christ, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him.